Wow, here we are right now, right here, 7 p.m. Pacific time. What time is it where you guys are at? Jack, Dylan, where you guys? 8 o'clock, right? 8 o'clock. Yeah. 8 o'clock Mountain Time. Yeah. So if you find yourself in southern Idaho, it is right now 8 o'clock p.m. Sunday night, the 18th. I lose track of days because I've been having so much fun riding and jeeping and having a good old time. I think it's the 18th. Pretty sure it is. You guys confirm? Yep. Ah, he's it actually got a look. See, I didn't, I'm not the only <laughs> one. We all live large. We're having so much fun living our lives and boondock nation it out there. We don't even know what day it is. Like, you should have a, to look at your calendar on a Sunday, right? I know, right? Like it was like my wife's birthday like a week ago. So I kind of had to remember that date. But like any old regular Sunday night, I know it's Sunday and it's John Ferry and live time. We're here. Tia Smith's got it figured out. Drop it in the comments and let us know where you are watching from. And for heaven's sakes, share, share, share this episode. It's going to be, I'm going to call it right now. I do this sometimes, guys, in advance. Not all the time, but this one I'm going to call it. This one is going to be an epic sode. We are going to have an epic sode right here tonight with Boondock Nation. We're getting everybody fired up. We got live viewers rolling in right now. Where are we watching from, guys? Drop it in the comments. I'm going to read some of these off. Let me see who we got, what we got going. I've got Tia Smith from Santa Barbara, California. We got Rick Schersel from Milwaukee. We've got Kyle P. Rick. Kyle P. Franklin from Lake Taco, also known as Lake Tahoe, but we like to call it Lake Taco. It's a good time. It's part of our inside joke, right, Kyle? Awesome, awesome. Monty is here from North Dakota, but he is currently over in Grand Forks as he's trucking the, all the goods across the country. Mr. Andy is out there. I believe he doesn't say where he's at, but I know he's in Colorado. We got Jesse Bradley from Alaska. Todd Kramer from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Keith is in the Adirondack Mountains in here. Killing it, guys. Oh, my gosh. We even got the one, the only. My guest from last week, Aaron Frazier from the Action Sports Club is in the house. In the comments, dropping some flames. We got it going on. Bullhorns to you guys, too. All right, guys. We are living large. Does, do I need to remind anybody what live large means? I, this is a pop quiz, and I'm going to put you guys on the spot. There's three foundational values for live large. Jack, Dylan, there's bonus points if you can nail any one of them. Oh, oh boy. Oh, guys, come on. This is the test. John, why did you have to start yeah. out with this? No, no. This <laughs> one's, All right, guys, I'm going to tell everybody else because I keep reminding everybody because it's so important. Live large to me and to everybody who follows the show. This is what it means. It's live life to the fullest. Do you guys live life to the fullest? See, yeah, you, knew, yeah. you, knew, you knew the Sorry. answer. You knew the answer. Do you make the most of every day? You know it. Yeah. Yep. And do you do amazing things for other people? I can answer that. I can answer that. You do, because you made my day amazing a couple, about a month and a half ago. We had an amazing day on the snow together. But guys, here we are. Drop it in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. And share. Right now, share. You know why? Guys, I'm going to cover your beautiful faces up for one minute. I'm going to show them an amazing little picture here that is going to show them the prize that's up for grabs tonight. Guys, fly racing night tonight. John Farian here, fly ambassador. You guys, Jack, Dylan, do you guys know anything about being a fly ambassador? Yeah. Oh, yeah. we know a thing or two. You guys know a thing <laughs> about it. You guys are rocking these goggles. So right now, these guys are looking on the screen at a pair of amazing Zone Pro snow goggles. $100 value. Part of the share and win tonight. So share the heck out of the show. Get it out there. Let everybody know we're over here having fun, having a good time. Watch the show tonight. Share the show tonight. Follow Fly Racing Snow on both Facebook and Instagram and give them some love. So, all right, guys, let's cut to the chase. Who the heck are we talking to tonight? So, quick introductions. Uh, Dylan, you go first. So, I'm Dylan Rose, um, originally from Eagle River, Wisconsin. And uh, Jack and I are just living the dream out here in Idaho. Been out here for uh, four years now doing this thing. And, uh, yeah, can't complain at all. Awesome. How about yeah, Jack? I'm Jack, go for it. Grandma. Yeah, I'm Jack Sarama. Dylan and I went to high school together, um, and that's kind of when we started Boondock Nation with a couple other buddies. Um, growing up in the Midwest, you know, it was always our dream to be riding snowmobiles uh, out here. You know, snowmobiles are a big part of our culture uh, back home. We grew up riding to school. So out west was always on our mind. Um, and then once we started taking trips out here, we realized that this was truly what we enjoyed doing. 
Yeah, we all get hooked at one point. I know for me, it's the same deal. Like I used to live in Minnesota. Because you guys, what state were you in when you guys first started? Minnesota, was it? Or where were we at? Wisconsin, yeah. Wisconsin. It's Minnesota, Wisconsin is basically the same place. One just likes the Green Bay Packers. The other one likes the, the Vikings. But other than that, it's basically the same place, right? Agreed? Yeah. Yeah. Lake country. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there's cheese on one side and there's lakes on the other side, but you know, whatever. All right, guys. So being a Midwest rider myself, I know it, right? Like 2007, my first ride out to the mountains and I got like hooked line, you know, line and sinker right away. And here I am. I don't know how many years later I've lost track. Is that 13 years later? Something like that. And, uh, wow, it's been quite a ride. And for you guys too, right. To go from being Midwest guys, snowmobiling, getting out, starting this whole thing, riding out West. It's, it's such a cool time. So you guys and I, and so Jack, I think this year, I think I'm just looking back at this year alone. I'm probably sure we've bumped into each other at one time or another, even before that. But this year alone, the Salt Lake City Snow Show, you were out there cruising around the Salt Lake, Salt Lake City Snow Show. Tell us a little bit about that experience and what you got to do when you're out there. Yeah, you know, uh, the last few years doing Boondock Nation, we always hit the trade shows in the Midwest. You know, Heyday is being a big one. Yeah. Um, Milwaukee, Novi, Michigan. Um, so that that was pretty much the extent of the shows we went to. But this year, you know, our network out here has grown so much. Yeah. Um, Dylan was hunting, but I had a free weekend and had the opportunity to go out to the show. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect, you know, especially – in the middle of COVID uh, this fall. So uh, to arrive at that show and to get together with everybody after all the other shows being canceled was yeah. fantastic. Um, so yeah, I think that's maybe the first time that we met. I know we've been friends on uh, on social for a couple of years now, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, the Utah cool. show is a lot of fun. Cool. And then fast forward to, I believe it was sometime in February. Wasn't it the last week in February that we all rendezvoused in McCall, Idaho, and we got to hang out together. So McCall, Idaho, the fly racing snow ambassador ride, right? That was, that was such a cool experience. And, uh, that's, you know, in speaking of those goggles that were given away, like that's what we were all rocking. We were out there just constantly wiping the dang snow off of them. But the cool part is those goggles worked so amazing that day. They do for sure, and especially for their price point, like they're not an expensive goggle, like oh, yeah. like like you see out there. They work awesome. Um, you know, Jack and I've been running those for the last two years now, Same. and I hardly change goggles throughout the day, to be honest. Yeah, it's rare <laughs> to have to make a goggle change. Yeah, and then on the flip side, like yesterday, I was out in sixty plus degree weather, blazing scorching sun. I had my red mirrored polarized, you know, goggles as well, and they work awesome, like sunglasses as well, on the other end of the spectrum. So, uh, you know, it's been a great thing too. But uh, you know, fly racing team is quite a team. Like, it's so amazing to get the team together. So, you guys did a quick little video blurb. I think it was like about a seven, eight minute long video blurb um, of that event. I shared it out earlier this week. If you guys missed it, go back and watch it. But Let's talk a little bit about that experience and what you guys got to experience at the Fly Ambassador ride. Well, first of all, could it have been timed any better? Like, how about that snow? It was yeah. nuking. It was nuking out there, man. It was like every day we'd wake up with another fresh two feet of snow. Yeah. I mean, without a doubt, it was the deepest snow we rode all season. Yeah. And it's so weird, you know, being out in the mountains here, the way that we drive from eastern Idaho over to McCall, you're driving through desert. Yeah. The entire time, right? So um, it's just really difficult to wrap your mind around driving through the desert and then arriving to four feet of fresh snow uh, that <laughs> night. So uh, that was something else. I don't know. The place that we all stayed, um, that lodge was pretty incredible. Yeah, too. <laughs> that was over the top. And just everyone that was there, um, you know, we got to put a face to the name for a lot of people and finally, you know, connect the dots a little bit, which was good, too. Um, a lot of the guys, you know, we were friends with some people already and obviously friends with all of them through social media, but to finally actually meet people in person was super fun. Well, I kind of get the feeling you guys are like me and I just call it like it is. It's like, everybody's my friend. They just don't know it yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the truth? So we, I think it was Friday and Saturday. And so Friday was the day that I got to ride with you guys and our crew. We had, uh, you know, Lyric Murphy, her son, Alex was with, it was you guys, uh, one guy I want to make sure we don't forget tonight is your filmer, your your photographer, right? Was his name Matt, if I remember right? Matt, Matt Baker, yeah. 
Yeah, that's correct. Are you guys down to give Matt a little love here tonight? Like, I know he's not on the show here with us, but I'd love to give him a shout out and give him some props for his amazing work. No, he is a, he is the best, man. Mm-hmm. Um, it's we've worked with a lot of people, you know, filming backcountry snowmobiling. It's one of the most difficult jobs on earth, in my opinion. Um, you know, we have a tough enough time getting up every day and going out and riding, you know, long hours filming into the night. Um, but he has so much going around in his mind, you know, we just have to focus on riding and doing cool stuff. Yeah. Um, he's got to focus on the entire production. Right. Yeah. I mean, for him to have to deal with all the variables of cameras and charging everything and making sure, you know, we stay on track with our storyline and getting all the content we need is a big deal. And, you know, he's super talented. I don't know if you noticed with the drone, he's got a lot of hours on the drone and we've been doing a lot for that this season. Thanks to him. It's been pretty cool. Next level for sure, I think, for us. Well, and let, not to not to mention the dude can actually ride pretty damn hard, right? So, like, watching okay. him follow you guys around and, I mean, keep in mind, so here we all are, you know, running around, you guys killing it, four feet of snow. He's got, what, 50-plus pounds of camera gear on his tunnel? <laughs> And That's he's trying to follow you guys around and keep up with you to be able to film you? Like, talk about, you know, <laughs> talk about some mad skills. Yeah, and, you know, just... As you said, 50 pounds, that's no joke. Um, and I've always wondered, you know, he's got the 175, which helps. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, we had to leave his sled up in the hills yesterday. Oh, no. Um, so we threw the camera case on the back of my sled. Oh, no. <laughs> and, you know, like, trail right out, especially with all that weight being up pretty high on the yeah, tunnel. Yeah. It throws it around like you wouldn't believe. I oh, give yeah. a lot of credit. Yeah, like I don't even want to haul around some extra three three gallons of fuel on my sled, a Jix or jerry can. Like I can't even do that anymore. It's like yeah. I've just gotten so used to riding without that kind of weight, and for him to all day long be hanging out with you guys, and uh, you know, just such a talent and such a cool dude too. Like we got to hang out with him out on the mountain too, and you know, another another solid dude uh, up there hanging out with us. But um, yeah, epic snow. I mean, it was like chest deep you know, getting stuck all day, someone may or may not have accidentally bombed down into a tree well pretty hard. (laughs) I don't know, you know, like it happens to everybody, right? Yeah, it does. Um, Yeah, I know that that snow was just, it was so fun because it seems like when uh, you get those kind of storms later on in the season, you know, you've already had a couple months of riding under your belt. Um, It's like a switch flips in your head, you know, um, you can actually apply some of the things you've learned throughout the season. You can push a little bit harder, Mm -hmm. um, try some different things. So I love it when we get those late season dumps because uh, you can really fire it up. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, big shout out to the, the fly racing, you know, leadership at the at corporate office with Western power sports for pulling that event off. That was their first annual. I believe they're planning on doing it again each year and uh, to get everybody together and have an open invite for pretty much across the country. Anybody who wants to show up, uh, it was pretty awesome. We had, you know, Andy there from Colorado was there on a snow bike. We had, you know, literally I met Keith Bailey there. Who's a professional hill climb racer. Uh, you know, ever since I met him in person now, I actually went back to the hill climb races and watched him race in person that was amazing and then just i think it was yesterday or today he was online again i was watching them race that wherever they're at this week um and some of those hill crosses so it does really tighten up the relationships and allows you to get to know people even better but you know what a class act that whole crew is and the, the company as a whole and I, I know i love you know riding with the gear man it's like it's two years it's been just amazing gear to ride in so it's it's comfortable keeps me dry killing it hey, what's your favorite piece okay dylan what's your favorite piece of riding gear hands down is it boots is it is it jacket is it helmet what's your favorite piece i would say it's the helmet for sure i mean i think fly is known to have the best helmet in the industry right now i mean their color combinations the safety um just all around it's a sweet looking helmet and uh i love that thing for sure Yep, I've got a couple of them yeah. myself. I've got the carbon one, and then I've got the CC. I got one of each, and you know, believe it or not, I mean, the Formula Carbon is amazing, like the carbon fiber one is. But the CC is like so close in performance and weight and stuff too that, right. like, sometimes I forget which helmet I'm wearing. That's how close they are. So it's it's been an amazing product, both of them. So how about you, Jack? What's your favorite piece? And you can't pick the helmet. You got to pick a sec. If <laughs> yeah, that, if that is your favorite, you got to pick a different one. Uh, if I could, I, I agree with you uh, on the CC and the carbon. Um, besides that, you know, I really am a fan of the carbon gear this year, specifically the carbon jacket. You know, they yeah. redid that one this year, and uh, it just fits so well. 
you know, it's it's not a name brand membrane like Sympatex, like the incline stuff is. But I've never had an issue. Uh, yeah. Getting wet out there. No. You know, yeah. And stuff. So um, this year, yeah, that's that. The carbon was a dark horse for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I definitely love that, that. It actually was a late, uh, I'll be honest with you, like the red jacket I've been wearing is the carbon jacket, like all season long, everybody's been seeing my pictures in that jacket. And, uh, same thing. Like I last year rode the incline gear with the Sympatex mm-hmm. gear blind, and I was super happy with that. It was amazing gear. And I was a little skeptical of the carbon plus being a little bit of a bigger dude last year or two years ago, the carbon gear was just always, it just didn't quite fit me, but they did redesign some of it. They really got it to fit nice. So, you know, size wise, it fit me perfect. And I actually tried it on at the dealership and I called called Colin back up and I says, Colin, I got to ride with that red, that red coat, like hook me up. Right. And so he shipped me one of those as well. And, uh, I got set up with that and that's been my primary riding jacket all year round was that carbon carbon jacket. So, yeah, this stuff really works well. Um, I'm excited for the future for the new gear that's coming out. Yeah. Um, it's, it's good to be part of the fly family. Amen. Amen. Well, let's get down to the nuts and bolts of it. I mean, bottom line is we're here to talk about Boondock Nation. And like what I just, you know, when I think of Boondock Nation, I think of two dudes living the dream, right? It's, you know, anybody who's out there that's a, you know, a hardcore sledder has heard of you guys at this point. We've watched your shows, your YouTube clips, your social media blips. And like, let me get this straight. You guys told me this, but I want to make sure I heard this right. You guys are legit doing this full time now. This is quote unquote, your job, like you're not working a second job. You're not pushing carbs part, you know, pushing shopping carts at Walmart on the weekends. Are you? (laughs) Uh, I'm dual careering at this. Are you? Okay. Okay. Um, but this is definitely a full-time job. Yeah. Yep. It turned into a full-time job for me, um, this fall. So I'm new to it, but, uh, yeah, living the dream for sure. Yeah. And you know, I, there's something to be said to you about actually, riding uh i think we're clo- approaching 60 days on wow. the snow the winter yeah. um yeah. it's a full-time job just running maintenance on the sleds <laughs> especially uh, the way you, especially the way you ride jack i've watched it I, I was on the hill the day that your chain case blew out or you're dripping oil out of your chain case so that night yeah you ride all day that night you fix your sled all night and then you get out there and you shred the next day again right exactly yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah boondock nation um really it it has evolved so much in the last couple of years. The digital landscape has changed so much that uh, we're really hands-on with what we do on the day-to-day and the long-term projects. And uh, there's, you can really bite off as much as you want to chew. You know, yeah. there's all the opportunity to be doing something new. Um, so there's kind of that instant gratification <laughs> factor, and it's just so much fun to work on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, not to mention we have a we have a team that helps us with our social media, and obviously. You know, Matt Baker um, helping us with uh, producing our videos. So, you know, we have we have people that are backing us, too, that are helping us, um, you know, where we just can't do it all. Wouldn't be able to do it yeah. without them. Nope, absolutely. So, I mean, plus all the travel time. I mean, you think about, like, I think I'm somewhere in right in the mid, maybe tail end of the 30 number of days riding season for there. And I've, you know, I got a full-time job Monday through Friday and I pretty much get to work on the weekends. And I've taken, I think, three or four different, either long weekends or a week off type of thing. And just the travel time to get to where you guys are going and the amount of time invested in getting the sleds ready, you know, I mean, you guys got to put some serious miles on those sleds too. I know it's not all about the quote unquote miles, but there's no joke. I mean, you guys got some serious time on those sleds this year, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know what we're at for mileage right now, but I was (laughs) probably around 1500, 1600 miles. Yeah. Yeah. I think we'll get 2000 by the end of the year. Yeah, that's all. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think most people I know that mountain ride, I mean, they land somewhere between 500 and maybe a thousand miles if they get lucky. And, you know, I always am one of the extra lucky ones. And I usually hit somewhere around that 1500 mile mark by the end of the season. And, uh, you know, luckily out here in Washington, we get to ride all the way into May for sure. If we get really lucky, we ride into June. And on those extra, extra lucky years, you can ride all the way into July sometimes. So it's pretty amazing oh. out here. <laughs> Very cool. That's something I'd like to do is like a 4th of July ride. I've never... Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll keep an eye on the snow this year, and if uh, if it works out, we'll uh, maybe have you guys drive out quick. I've got I've got at least one extra. You guys can flip. I got like one extra sled to ride. I don't know if Edith will let anybody ride her sled, but I've got two sleds. I can let one of you guys ride one of them. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> or you can flip the coin. Maybe ride two up, and one can drive, one can ride. You guys can take turns. No. 
Hey, we're pretty good at yeah. that. Yeah. I bet you have to to get up and film and get a spot and come back down and you know do the shot. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, in all seriousness, no Bloom Doc Nation. I mean, you, how, what year did you say it start? Was it when did you guys uh, kick this up? So 2015, and so we're what five plus years in, and I would imagine your initial goals and what you started with and the format of the content you were putting out, I'm guessing is dramatically different in 2015, 16 than it is today because you know, what's going on in the, the digital world and social media and streaming and all that kind of stuff too. And I mean, there was like full on episodes that you guys had on, you know, some of those different platforms that are out there. If I remember it was like Apple TV and different places that I've seen some of them. Um, but talk to us about that transition of what the content used to be when you first started and kind of what your goals were and how that's evolved. Like talk us through that. Yeah. Well, when we first started producing content, it was, um, a broadcast television show that only aired in the upper Midwest. So okay. it aired like Wisconsin, a little bit into the UP, Illinois, um, Minnesota, you know, that, that kind of general region. And we started out with just one pilot episode in 2015, just to prove the concept. And then how much, how many did we do the next year? Was it four the next year? We were year? shooting for four, but we yeah. only got three done. Um, okay. So I forget how that all worked. But yeah, we, uh, you know, originally, I guess before the first broadcast episode was produced, we had a Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where everything starts, right? But uh, we had, we were producing this first pilot episode when we had like 500 followers. So we didn't really know what to expect. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, we went to the trade shows to promote it just to shake some hands and, get the grassroots following going and um we met a lot of people there for sure that um kind of saw what we were doing and liked it and were willing to you know give us a hand whether it was with a sponsorship or just connecting us with some people um so that was super helpful and by the time we rolled into those next three episodes we definitely had a little momentum behind us yeah. just because there wasn't really any broadcast tv snowmobiling on broadcast tv yeah. at the time um, you know, in the early 2000s, there's like American Snowmobiler TV right. and some other shows. And um, there's definitely a gap. And uh, we kind of slid our way into that. Yeah. So then we continue to um, kind of push in this destination direction where um, we, our sister brand, Discover Wisconsin, has kind of been founded on, you know, going to a destination, promoting what there is to do there. And we kind of adopted that, made it our own. We would sell these packages we would say for example we're going to star valley wyoming we haven't done an episode there in a couple of years but go to star valley wyoming um and we're gonna promote what there is to do in town maybe somewhere to stay local restaurant and then you know just kind of film what cool riding there is to be had and that's kind of the foundation i think of what Boondock nation kind of is today but it's evolved from there yet too yeah yeah and one thing i'll say that uh, hasn't changed since the beginning is uh, the nation part of Boondock Nation. Yeah. Is we are not, um, you know, elitists. We'll ride with anybody. Um, that's been our mantra from the beginning. So um, that's opened up a lot of doors for us because we have featured some people on the show, you know, that are just locals uh, who we've, you know, met through the grapevine or, you know, professional athletes who have been, uh, you know, professional snowmobilers for 10 plus years. You know, we, uh, we run I mean, all I mean, I can vouch for the fact that you guys even put like middle age graying safety guys in your videos. Like I saw that like literally last <laughs> week I was like, oh my God, they didn't cut me out. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what we're all about. Yeah. Amen. So as, uh, you know, as we started to get into this and we we're producing more content and broadcast episodes and social media was starting to take off we realized that there was a need to uh, get some content out mid season. You know, we yeah. film all winter and post on social media. And then these episodes would air in the fall mm -hmm. um, over eight weeks on broadcast. <clears throat> so uh, we started a little mini series called one of those days, which Dylan and I filmed ourselves just on okay. GoPros, and cell phones. And it was kind of a vlog style video. And yeah. those seemed to do really well. Yeah. And they're fun to make. Um, so that was kind of the first step in the digital direction. Okay. Um, some of our podcast episodes I've been posted to YouTube started doing really well um, and getting some traction on there. So we kind of started to shift our focus that direction. Yeah. <clears throat> so then it just kind of uh, eventually over the last couple of years has evolved from, you know, our focus being broadcast episodes and then, you know, creating content that um, 
would air mid season so we could keep our YouTube channel active and keep people still interested in what we're trying to do um, to our main focus being YouTube channel, digital platforms, streaming, and our social media with, we still air uh, our four episodes actually this year will air uh, broadcast in the upper Midwest in the fall for eight weeks. So, um, but that's just kind of a bonus. That's just, we're making um, four episodes out of the content we're just creating for our YouTube channel this year. So um, we're definitely focused on growing um, all of our digital, all of our digital plat platforms. Yeah, there's been a couple developments um, in the past season. You know, we launched Boondock Nation Plus, which is, as you mentioned, uh, streaming on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire, Chromecast. Um, we also have an iOS and Android app. Mm -hmm. And then additionally, we got picked up by Mav TV, uh, which is a nationwide broadcast, and Edge TV, uh, which broadcasts in Europe and Africa, uh, I think even in Russia, Canada, and some uh, other countries across <laughs> the world. So. All right, so so talk talk me through this. I'm on I'm on my app store right now, my Apple phone, and we're gonna do this as an audience, everybody together. I can't believe that I didn't already know there was an app for Boondock. Are you saying there's an app for Boondock Nation I can download on my phone? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna do this live on the air right now. Everybody else, follow along in the comments. Let me know if you're on Apple or Android, and we're all gonna download this app right now. So all right, I'm just gonna type in Boondock Nation, or what am I typing in? Yep, Boondock Nation. All right. As long as I know how to spell, I'm in good shape. <laughs> Boondock Nation. Boom. There it is. Boondock Nation. Oop. Double click on the side. Done. And it's loading. But I'm doing that while we're on the show. Look at that. There it is. It's downloading right now as we speak. Boom. That's awesome. So then I got video links to uh, like a lot of your content and everything, or what's on the what's on the apps? Yeah. So you've got to create an account. Okay. Um, all, all we want is your email. To be honest, just to send you some cool stuff. Okay. Uh, we're not gonna sell it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> everything's free. All our content gets uploaded to there. In addition, you know, to YouTube um, and social media, but everything's in one spot there. And we're looking to do some exclusive content on that app as well. Very cool. Very cool. That's cool. I didn't know that. See, I even learned something new. I didn't know you guys had an app out there with the content and all that stuff too. I mean, like, let's be honest. Like nowadays, if you got an app, you're definitely cool. I don't even have an app yet. I'm not cool yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're trying to, we're seeing how it goes. You know, um, most people have their preferred ways of consuming content. Got it. Um, I myself, you know, I'm a smart TV guy or on my laptop. I don't use my phone very frequently, but uh, I use the Roku app all the time. So awesome. awesome. Uh, everybody's got their own prime time and their own way to watch their show. That's cool. Well, we got people in the comments letting us know right now that they're either on Android or Apple. Two or three of them have said, I got it. They just downloaded it too. So we're getting you guys some uh, some more followers here live as we speak. Hey, thank you. We appreciate yeah, thank that. Thank you, guys. Well, it's just good content. I mean, it's like, I, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm a fan. Like, I watch a lot of the content. I follow you guys on social media. It's fun, you know, to watch the stuff there too. And it's like, who doesn't want to, you know, when you're not actually snowmobiling and you're at work daydreaming, like, who doesn't want to watch more snowmobile content? And why not two cool dudes that have a good time, right? That's yeah, awesome. you know, there's even those crazy guys like us that watch it throughout the summer. So yeah. we keep putting it out year round. <laughs> well, when when your wife makes you go to Hawaii for a family vacation and you're sitting on the beach thinking about snowmobiling, now you've got something to do. You can watch snowmobile videos on your phone, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you're forced to go to Hawaii. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, what else do the followers, what should they know? Like, I mean, here's the thing. Like, what, what today, I know you talked about the evolution of it. I want to make sure I caught it is, like, if you had to kind of, you know, in a nutshell... What is Boondock Nation's focus today? Is it still highlighting locations? Is it now, you know, more the little short clips versus the longer video content? I know you kind of covered it, but just summarize for us, like, what is Boondock Nation's focus today going forward? And like, what do you, where do you see it going? Like, what's the vision going forward for it? Today, we're focused on showing people the best destinations to snowmobile what to do while you're there, and the cool people that we get to ride with. Um, you know, and just the lifestyle of a backcountry snowmobile. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think you hit, hit the nail on the head for sure there. As far as going forward, we definitely, um, you know, I, I'm not sure how, how sure. Let me get that out. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how much longer we're going to be on broadcast. Okay. Um, so our focus is hugely digital. Um, you know, we've got some things in the works for next season to be putting out content more regularly even yet. Okay. Um, and just kind of trying to grow our brand um, in that way uh, as a lifestyle brand a little bit and uh, for just showing people what cool destinations they are and kind of what we're known for already. Yeah, so I'd say for a tangible goal, you know, we want to be at probably a video a week, year-round content too, focusing on some dirt stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we've dipped our toes into that. We both spend a lot of time on the sum, uh, during the summer fishing and out on the lake. Yeah. Um, so expect to see some stuff in that regard. But um, yeah, video a week is a good goal for us. That's awesome. So in the comments here, I got somebody, JJ here has told us, uh, he says that he really, and I think this kind of goes for a lot of us, right? And I'll, I'll vouch for this too, is, uh, you know, I really enjoy the behind the scenes stuff in all sports. So regardless of what kind of sports stuff it is, you know, it's one thing to watch the content, but then it's like, you know, like literally yesterday, I don't know if, it, you know, if you guys saw or for the people who are following me, saw this like amazing picture of me, you know, taking, you know, I'd actually done a picture of my sled. Let me find it quick here. So I was taking this picture, right? So like, you know, perfect setup shot. And what oh, was yeah. what was really cool was there was a I didn't know it, there was a guy behind me taking a picture of me taking a picture of my sled. And I thought like that's actually kind of cool. Like the behind the scenes stuff, right? You don't get to see always what's going on is uh, you know, the making of Boondock Nation. Sometimes you get that, you know, special content and kind of just helps everybody kind of know that you guys are just real dudes making it happen. So Exactly. And that's, uh, I think, what we hope to do with some of this uh, exclusive content on our app um, and possibly, you know, our website going forward. So, yeah, you're definitely on the right track there, John. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, you guys want to dive into a little bit about snowmobiles? Like, what are you guys riding this year? I know I got to see what it is, but I don't know if everybody following has kind of figured out under those awesome wraps, you know, what it is that you're shredding on. What, give, us a, give us the lowdown. Yeah, so we, uh, we got twin uh, 850 turbos. They're actually one serial number apart. They're oh, built wow. right after each other on the line. So, um, yeah, they're, the, they're twin slides, 154, three inch turbos. Um, and they've been awesome. We got them set up, uh, exactly the same. So when we're making adjustments, we can kind of compare and contrast pretty nicely. That's cool, actually, to be able to have two sleds that, like, you know, if you put one performance part on one, does it outperform compared to the other? And you can kind of stair step your, your upgrades along the way. And that's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, exactly. I just made one change to mine. Um, I put a belt drive on, an MVM belt drive. Okay. Uh, it's the lightest belt drive out there, and I wanted to try gear down anyway. I've geared down my last two Skidoo's, um, naturally aspirated 850s, um, but I really like the legs the turbo had, you know, especially for the deep snow. Yeah. But now that we're getting to springtime, I'm like, I didn't really see a disadvantage to a gear down. So it's been really interesting to play with clutching on that now and compare it to his. Mm -hmm. um, I saw my chain case. Right. So right there, uh, suspension too. We were both around the Raptor Ace. Mm -hmm. um, loads of adjustability there. Yeah. So that's been fun to tinker out as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, John, is your sled a 165? Mine's a 165 three inch. Yeah, it's a turbo. Mine's bone stock, other than the wrap on it right now. Uh, and just generally, I've been a pretty, like, I run my stuff generally stock. Like, for me, the number one goal I always have for uh, all my stuff is, you know, round trip, right? Get out there, reliable, gas and oil, get back home. Um, you know, heaven knows. Anybody who follows me knows the signature move that I came up with this season called the tree entry. It's where you go up and you do a re-entry and you circle back down and you hit a tree. Like that's that's the only issue I've had with my entire my sled all season was replacing my upper A arm from the tree entry. So uh, it's been amazing. Like I, it's been like, and that's one thing I'm really impressed with. Skidoo coming out with that turbo season one. That thing is dialed. Like it you know. Is. Yeah. yeah, and that's one thing that uh, we've, I guess one thing that would set us apart from uh, other athletes out there is uh, we're not brand loyalists by any means. Yeah. Uh, so we're on skidoos this year. I've always been a skidoo guy, but this is your first skidoo. My right? first skidoo, yeah. I've been on cats in the last three seasons and then Laris is before that. Um, but yeah, like Jack said, we just like to ride whatever is, you know, maybe the most fitting for us that season. Yeah. I wanted to switch just because. 
I uh, wanted to try something different. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty fun to be able to bounce around how we want. So yeah. are you are you guys prepared to let the cat out of the bag and let us know what you plan on writing next season yet? Yeah. Is this going to be is this going to be a first time publicly broadcast national announcement of the Boondock Nation official sleds for 2022 20 what is it 2021 2022 season? Exactly. Yeah, I guess we haven't really talked about it at all. No. Um we're both back on skidoos. Okay. Uh you got an X, right? Yeah, I got a Summit X 3 inch 154. I uh just I don't know. Didn't didn't really feel like the thirty four inch front end was my thing. So okay, I got the Summit X. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, and yeah. I got an expert, but I'm putting a different front end on it the first day I get it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm protesting the thirty four inch front end. Yeah, and you did went with the one fifty four again, also. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and honestly, for the I mean, I watch you guys ride, and for the type of riding you guys do, that's a hundred percent. You know, having a one sixty five three inch. I would tell you the way you guys ride and what you how you're using them, that like 154, three inch or even a two and a half, whatever you know you got. But a 154 definitely is uh, more conducive to the type of riding you guys do, where you know you're trying to huck yourselves around in circles, upside down, barrel, you know, whatever it is that you do on purpose and or by accident, it's always really cool. But you're being acrobats on your sleds, and so that's for sure the right sled for you guys. Yeah, I agree completely. We're gonna try and pick up a couple other sleds too, potentially um, to build out. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we talked miles on season. If we're going to ride even more next season, which is likely, yeah, yeah. Um, it would be nice to spread out those miles over a couple machines, that's for sure. Yeah, no, it's for sure. And that's kind of, I mean, a couple of different reasons. Like here in Washington, our snow, frankly, it's pretty crappy a good chunk of the season, you know, like, you know, you get a great deep day, it lasts like two days and then it, you know, gets warm refreezes turns to concrete and so i i love having two sleds i've got the 154 two and a half inch it's a naturally aspirated sled and i've got the turbo 165 three inch and so to me i've got my deep snow slash out of state go ride with boondock nation guys in idaho and four feet of powder sled and i've got my if i want to just go out and get jiggy with it a little bit i can get upside down you know do re-entries whatever i got to do both the turbo helps with the re-entries even on the longer track sled though i'll gotta tell you you guys you guys yeah. saw that it was in your video <laughs> uh, yeah that, that sounds like a dynamic duo right there yeah it's pretty fun plus the nice part is on the crappy snow keeping the sled cool the 154 two and a half inch with the full length tunnel and a full snow flap definitely is a lifesaver on those icy mornings so if, uh, but, awesome. Yeah, that's nice. So, what are the top? I mean, you talked about the upgrades on the sleds, but so Jack, you've done a belt drive. You guys do like upgrade performance chips and stuff in them too, or don't you? Do you guys? Yeah. So we've been running uh, bike and torque link tunes uh, stage two all season. We broke our sleds in without tunes on. I think we put like 100, 150 miles mm -hmm. on them, okay. and then tuned them. Um, but just been running pump gas and. Uh, yeah, no issues in 14 or 1500 miles. I think I've had to take my sled into the shop once overnight to get a coolant temp sensor and it's back the next day. Got yeah. It. Um, you know, being that our sleds were built one right after the other, when his coolant temp sensor went down, I figured mine would at some point and it just did. So I had to take mine. <laughs> into the dealership. Um, yeah. Other than that, I mean, I've broken a ton of stuff, but it's all been really justified. Um, yeah. no, no issues outside of the broken parts, but, yeah, just the tune, um, charge, our charge tube, tube yeah. and clutch weights are what we started with. Nice. And with those upgrades, I mean, it was a noticeable difference over stock for sure. Yeah. But we've been riding with Jared Sessions a lot. He does tuning for Torque Link. Mm -hmm. And um, he's developed some new tunes. That's what's cool about Torque Link is it's, uh, it's like Easy Link. It's all cloud-based. Okay. Uh, so Jared's out here. I mean, he's still bringing a laptop out into yeah. the mountains every day. Um, working on new tunes and refining them. So once he gets something solid, he usually sends it out to us and a couple other guys to test it um, in a few different sleds. As he explained, if something is different on his sled um, or if something's broken on his sled, he doesn't want to tune around a broken sled. So yeah. he sends it to us, we kind of beta test it, get back to him, and then he releases it to the public. Got it. Uh, so then you can go and download if you have a Torque Link device and flash that onto your sled in five minutes. That's very cool.
very cool. So that's been a good upgrade. Yeah, it's been fun for sure. It's been cool to see like the tunes were great at the beginning of the season, but we've gone through a few different versions of them yeah. now. And the most recent uh, flash that we've gotten our sleds is pretty wicked. We've only yeah. got like two cats on it, but it's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, we're on like eight pounds of boost now. If you have wow. <laughs> that's, that's insane. That's pushing what over 200 horse easy then, right? That's uh, probably right around, right around yeah. 200, yeah. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Um, and so, you know, I'm going to call you out here for a minute. It's like not being brand loyal, I'm going to ask you, did you, like I did, get a chance to ride the new Polaris Matrix Slash this year and or the Boost version, either one, naturally or Boost? Did you get on one this year yet at all? Never, ha haven't had the opportunity yet, I should say. Um, but they seem like super cool sleds. I've yeah. seen them in person like twice. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just... I really like the Skidoo Turbo this year, so I, yeah. I feel like, I, I don't know, without riding one, I would have a hard time ordering it. Yeah, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's, yeah. I mean, my take is it's, a, it's you know, if, if a guy is a Polaris guy, he's going to love the Matrix Boost Turbo, oh, yeah. right? And and for me, being used to riding the Skidoo, it's like, it's it's hard to give up what you love, right? It's like, especially when it yeah. treats, treats you so good year after year after year and the reliability, the dependability, you know, the steady power, you know, everything's dialed in on that thing pretty tight on a first year sled. So I got no reason to get rid of it. How about you, Jack? What, what was your, what yeah. were you going to say? I can't wait to try the Polaris. Um, we almost had the opportunity to ride them. Um. Jared Sessions and Joel T went out with uh, Dan Adams and Cole Wolford, and they had a couple of them. Yeah. Um, they took us, or they took them into one of our favorite zones while we were out of town. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they were, we were a little salty about it, but um, no, that would have been our opportunity to ride them. Uh, hopefully, before the season's over, we'll get the chance to. Um, I think they look great mm -hmm. uh, on paper and in person. Yeah, it'll uh, be good to see if they hold. Like yeah, it'll be see, good to see if they hold together, especially the boost sled. I mean, they're putting more power to it on a factory stock warrantied sled than they are with Skidoo. And so we'll see if that uh, pays off for them and it holds together or yeah. or if it becomes a reliability issue. Only time will tell. So, uh, But I'm cheering for them, honestly. Like everybody in the industry winning is uh, what it's all about. So. For sure, Me too. Yep. Yeah, you said it right there. Um, yeah, I guess I'm interested to see how the chassis holds up too. You know, that seems to be my main struggle throughout a season is – keeping a chassis together um, yeah. it's been the best for that so far but I've still yeah. you know broke, bent a couple sets of rails bent a running board bent I was gonna say you had, last time I saw your sled you had a custom running board last time I saw it it had like extra tall height clearance for the snow under the runner running board right isn't that what you were yeah. doing well I mean really what it was is a parabolic side cut for oh uh, okay <laughs> <laughs> it side hills way better on the one side than the other i bet right exactly yeah. exactly yeah see that's what it's all about <laughs> anything else on sled talk before we shift into just kind of like you know reflecting on the season and some of the highlights of the season i think uh, we're pretty good yeah i think we covered it Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, you know, let's just, I mean, we talked specifically about a couple of specific events, you know, the flying bass ride was a big part of it, but just like thinking back to the season and just having a reflection on the season, what were some of the highlights and things you want to share with the audience, uh, that you kind of really enjoyed? What was the, you know, and, and, and let's take into context the idea of, you know, again, it's probably not as big of a deal in Idaho as it is say in Washington here, but COVID, like how did COVID impact your touring this year and everything that happened and some of the reflections on the season. So, you know, let's talk us through it. Yeah. So that's actually an interesting point. You know, our season was so Idaho centric. Um, if you if you didn't notice that, like every destination we went to is an Idaho destination this year. First time ever um, doing it like that. But it worked that way just because of COVID. Um, you know, with Canada being shut down, we normally go up there every year, at least once, sometimes twice. Yep. Um, so we weren't able to do that. So we just focused on, you know, touring around Idaho and getting to know it a little bit more. Yeah, there were a lot of variables um, when we were trying to plan out the season, you know, um, starting a year ago right now, we would have been uh, just coming back from a trip to Canada, but, you know, we mm -hmm. couldn't do that. Um, a lot of our plans last season were put on hold. So um, when trying to put plans together, even over the summer, it was really difficult, mm -hmm. but we knew uh, a fair amount of people in Idaho, and if we stuck to the state we should be all right. So that was kind of our plan going into it. And it's honestly been a blessing. We've been able to explore this state 
uh, so much over the past few weeks. It's it's been really cool from north to south, east to west. Yeah, I mean there was a, a two week period where we were down in Twin Falls. Uh, well, we were here first, um, riding like the big holes in Teton Valley, and then we we're down in Twin Falls. Um, right around the Fairfield area, the Sawtooth Mountains, then all the way up to Coeur d'Alene. Um, and then not too long after that, we were over in McCall. So making all the rounds. Yeah. You hit all the hot spots, it sounds like. Oh. Yep, well, no good. You just broke up a little bit there. Yeah, so it sounds like you hit all the hot spots in Idaho. It's uh, I've been to a few of those places. Like I've ridden up around Coeur d'Alene, north of there, up by the Priest Lake area, and some of the areas like you know north of Coeur d'Alene there a little bit. So um, beautiful country up there. McCall's amazing. Um, I've hit you know the Island Park area a number of times. Uh, you know I'm sure you guys are close there too. So uh, and then did you did you pop over into Wyoming at all since it's so close over there or no? Oh yeah, we just rode Wyoming. Uh, what was that Friday? Yeah. Yeah, we are, let's see, I think we're about an hour from Alpine here, which is what yeah. it takes at the gas station every day, so that throws it off a little bit, but I think it's <laughs> about an hour drive for us to get to Alpine, and uh, we really like that area. You know, there's so many different zones to ride, and uh, the snow is typically pretty consistent. Yeah. Um, so all along the border here is our kind of backyard area. Yeah, like you guys followed, I'm sure, a little bit, is uh, I got to see the... Um, Alpine area went south to Afton, you know, near there, that Willow Creek area. Yeah. Got to go to um, Togety Pass for the first time. Like all those areas was the first time I'd ever ridden all those areas. And uh, the terrain, the country, you know, the elevations you get up into are pretty amazing. Um, but when I was there, though, I did see that uh, they had a pretty tough snow year this year. They didn't get a lot of the base that they normally would get. It was pretty thin. I think it's three, three, four feet of snow some places we were riding, um, which was pretty tough for them. So. It was a tough year. You know, it came on really strong early season and that we, we were just fired up to get oh, out yeah. here at the beginning of December. And then uh, everything went on hold for a couple of weeks, got another big storm, same thing. Um, and that created two terrible layers in the snowpack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we were facing all season up until recently. Um, now that it's gotten so warm, but yeah, that was uh, that was tough. January was pretty tough. Fortunately, we were traveling all around, and we hit great snow in Fairfield yeah. and almost hit great snow in Coeur d'Alene, but it was still um, better than around here. And then by the time we got back here, um, there was finally some base on the ground. But yeah, yeah, I ripped the front end off early season. Um, I ripped the track. Yeah, you had to do that. I had to do a track as well. <laughs> so you know, just kind of conditions. Yeah. Yep. Very but, good. It sounds like that's the case just about everywhere. I mean, even back in the Midwest, um, they really struggled in northern Wisconsin in winter this year. Um, and out in California and over by you guys, too, same story. Actually, I don't want to let out the little secret, but uh, we probably had an above average season. And I would tell you that the last two to three weeks I've been out riding, the snowpack is as deep or deeper than I have ever seen it at any time of the year in the season. Like, legit. We've got, I mean, three weeks ago, I was still riding on 10 foot of base, right? Even this week, I was probably riding on eight foot of base still, right? Like there's, right. Th you guys got to, <laughs> you guys got to come out and check it out sometime. It's pretty amazing. And like the spring riding here is amazing. And if you can time it on a bluebird crystal clear day, literally one of the most beautiful places in the lower 48 to ride is Mount Baker, Washington. And if we can make it work, I'll bring it up there. It's an amazing place to go. So the, the you can park, you know, spring riding, you park probably 4,000 feet-ish, three, three to 4,000 feet, and you can ride up, you know, 8,000 feet pretty easy. And if you have no brain and giant cojones, you can ride all the way almost to the top at 10,000 feet, but you're going over a glacier with 300 foot deep crevasses. If, if, if people do it, I don't. I usually go up to about 8,000 feet and I call it good. So, <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty amazing. And so like last year I rode all the way till June 20th, uh, in an area North of Mount Baker up there. And, you know, even like literally, I think it was June 20th and I pulled my probe out and I probed 10 foot of snow base still at like 5,000, 6,000 feet. So my goodness, <laughs> well, we have to put that on our yeah. list then to come up and see you. Yeah. Thanks that area that uh that would be something else yeah my literally like the last two weeks and all the way through into may and june is some of my favorite time of riding of the year i mean the snow quality again it's not fresh pow but the scenery you get to see the country you get to see the the, the spring slush it it does not suck so 
Yeah, we love spring riding, that's for sure. I mean, just the exploration is one of my favorite parts mm -hmm. of snowmobiling, and getting to see the views like yep. you talked about, and then uh, jumps. Jumps would be Oh, good. yeah. We t I mean, we were on a club ride the other day, and we built a, a giant four-foot kicker, you know? Like, you know, we were launching probably five feet in the air. It was epic. And there was multiple people in the club that had never, ever, ever even gotten their stumble off the ground before that we took out, and we got them on their first jumps. It was so cool seeing a 12-year-old kid, uh, you know, another middle-aged woman who, you know, they're all, you know, skill-level riders towards the beginning, the middle, you know, intermediate skilled riders. And they jump for the first time. You should have seen the smiles on their face. It was amazing. That is so cool. You know, jumping has always been something that I've been into uh, since a very young age. So then now when people ask me, <laughs> how do you hit a 150 foot jump? I say inch by inch. Yep. You know, it started with a two foot mound of dirt in one of our horse pastures. And now it's, you know, <laughs> Yeah, we got got people in the comments getting mad at me for talking about spring snowmobiling. My buddy Craig Olhauser from Ride Seven Hundred One, he's in North Dakota. He hung it up for the season already, and he's like just mad at me. Um, I've got Rick Scherzel from Milwaukee saying that's it, I'm moving, and he put a little fist on the pound, a pound of fist on the table. So we're making him jealous for sure. So, guys, uh, I think you know, is there anything in the reflection of the season? I guess one just surpri surprise question for you. Take it where you want to. Think of the people that you rode with this year. And I'm not looking for anything for me personally, so I'm, I'm off the list. But talk about some of your most memorable people that you rode with this last season. Top three, try to choose some people that maybe nobody knows about and give them a shout out. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, you know, I keep track of everybody we ride with in an Excel spreadsheet um, in every zone and every day uh, because I always like to look back on this stuff. And one day that sticks out to me is um, – a day we rode, it was a new zone um, over kind of towards Pinedale, Wyoming. And we were out with uh, Blaine Matthews and Jay okay. Menaberry. Okay. Um, we've known for a couple of years. And uh, the Sea Boys, um, mm -hmm. who are from okay. Cormorant, Minnesota, actually, over by Detroit Lakes, um, they have a very successful YouTube channel. They just broke like a million subscribers. So definitely encourage everybody in the audience to check those guys out. They do a lot of cool stuff with power sports. But um, – we were out with them, and then David McKinney from 509. Okay. Um, two of us and Matt Baker. And it was just a bluebird sunny day. The snow was great, yeah. actually. Um, it was nice and warm, and we were exploring just one of the most beautiful new zones uh, that Blaine knows, like, the back of his hand, and he was taking us around. And um, it was really neat because we were out there filming. You know, we definitely had a mission, but the entire day was just conducive to having a great time. The vibes were awesome, and we got some – great content mm -hmm. um, so cool. that's all that uh one of the mo most recent videos we dropped with the c boys very good how about you dylan anybody stands out that you hadn't already mentioned um i would say some of the more memorable well i guess not more memorable but um you know to get out with our good buddy taylor fisk this year um we got we got to ride it with him he's a fellow fly, fly ambassador too but um you know in seasons past he was a little bit more active in some of our content. It's been a few years since we've featured him in anything. So um, to be able to get out with him um, multiple days this season and go create some content was super fun. He's uh, He's been a supporter of ours since the beginning. So um, just he's probably one of the coolest guys we would know, in my opinion, this season. Yeah, I'd give you that. Very cool. Very cool. So, I mean, here's something, this is just kind of a, a I guess a, a personal endorsement for you guys is that, uh, you know, my one day on the snow with you guys was super memorable because, you know, watching you guys, it, it's almost surreal, right? Like, so you watch you guys, like you guys are the guys you're on the show and you just, you know, like anything, when we watch these, you know, sponsored writers, these ambassadors, you know, quote unquote, sled celebrity, sledder, sledder bees, maybe that's a new word. I just, I like inventing words. So sledder bees, maybe sled to celebrities. Um, you know, it's hard to get your head wrapped around, like, who is the person, right? But by being on the snow with you guys all day long, I would just say it was an honor to hang out with you guys and to, you know, be there and just to kind of see you guys like, you know, no different than the rest of us. You know, when you make something, you land something like you guys are just as stoked, whether it's the hundredth time you landed the jump or the turnout or whatever it is, as it is the first time we do it. Right. And so just to see the stoke that you guys have for the sport and the passion that you put into the filming of it and just all around good dudes. And, you know, I just remember like we, <laughs> Dylan, you'll remember this. I'm going to tell this story, Dylan. You remember this on the way down the mountain the day we rode? 
Oh yeah, I do remember that. Yep, yeah. Can you permission to tell the story? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, do it. So so here's what happened. So so Jack wasn't there. Jack was down at the trailhead already, or down at the bottom of the trail, dripping oil all over the trail, like from his chain case or whatever at the time, right? <laughs> but yeah. Dylan and Dylan and I were in the back, and I think him and I were like doing like getting our goggles cleaned up right before we left or something like that. And you guys got a little bit ahead of us, and so we ended up dropping, you know, off the hill down into this little, I think we call it the bobsled run, right? Coming out of McCall, there was this one area where literally it's a single track, super mm-hmm. steep, literally a snaky bob. It's one of those places that you can't stop, right? Like once you're in, you're committed and you're going. And I bet over 60% of that trail was full commitment, you're not stopping type of a trail, right? And so I drop in first, Dylan's behind me, and like, you know, we don't see anybody ahead of us because you guys are a little bit farther ahead of us. And so we're dropping in, we're doing our little bobsled run, things are going well, I'm looking over my shoulder once in a while to make sure Dylan's still there. And I'm looking over, my, literally this is what happened, I look over my shoulder, I see Dylan, and as I turn around, there's this big freaking creek hole right in front of me, and I'm like, oh crap. I literally just pin it, like just to get over this thing. You know, the turbo kicks in, the skis come up. I slam the other side. I literally get bucked off and fall over. And I figured out later that actually, like, I hit so hard somehow that one of my pieces of my wrap actually came off my sled at that oh. moment too, right? I had to pick pick it up, throw it in my tunnel bag, and I brought it home later. And I'm like, okay, I see Dylan back there, and I'm like, I think he's good. And so I start to ride a little bit forward. And all of a sudden I hear on the radio, like, hey guys, stop for a minute. Or like, I don't remember if I saw you first or if I heard you on the radio first, but I look back and I'm like, all I see is like the bottom of Dylan's sled. <laughs> so he's, he's upside down in this like creek hole and standing probably neck deep in this, like, you know, I don't know if you actually got to water cause it was so deep that I don't even know if we were down deep enough to get into the water, but like here was Dylan's sled upside down in the same creek hole. I almost ended up upside down in, and I went back and we we fought hard to get that thing out. Like all of the yeah, normal, yeah. all of the normal traditional things. I'm, I'm pretty good at getting unstuck. It's like one of my specialties cause I get stuck a lot. And so <laughs> to go over there and for the two of us to fight for probably 20 minutes to try yeah. to figure out how to get your sled tipped back right side up and out of that hole, that was a memorable moment. So that was, yeah. and again, but it's those moments like that. You realize like, you know what? we all, it all happens to all of us. Like, you know, we can film, we can do all these amazing things, these cool tricks. And it's like the best of the best shots of the day. But at the end of the day, like when you can get a a buddy upside down in a Creek and just laugh your butt off over having such a good time together, you know, those are real dudes, right? (laughs) Uh, Amen. (laughs) You know, we were sitting down on the trail wondering where you guys were at. We're we're thinking about going, I think this is before we made radio contact. We're like, well, should we go back up there and check on them? And we realized, there's no way to make it back up that trail. No. Yeah, you would have had to go around the trail and drop back in on top of us and hope not to land on top of us. <laughs> that, uh, that was awesome. So is there any part of that story that I missed, Dylan? I know I took the whole story probably from you, but is there any vivid parts of that memory that you have? Yeah, I was, uh, I was trying to, I could see a little bit of a line above this creek hole that I was going to try to side hill on, but it was like, I don't know. It was like rock hard right there for some reason. I think some uh, sled already took all the snow away from that and there was like a <laughs> chunk of ice and it just totally washed out on me and then flipped me upside down, downhill, um, <laughs> into this creek hole. Yeah. And you know, the only thing I regret about that moment is we didn't take pictures. <laughs> yeah, we should have done that. It's always a shame when the camera pulls out and you're trenched out stuck. That's awesome. Awesome. All right, guys. Final thank yous, shout outs to sponsors, anybody you want to give a little love to. Let's go. Well, I think we got a shout out to all of our sponsors. Um, every one of them has been so supportive this season um, and hooking it up at awesome, awesome stuff uh, all year. Uh, just super thankful for all the all the products we get to use, but uh, thankful for all the people we we're able to ride with this season. We never know who it's going to be, um, but it's been awesome riding with a bunch of our friends from around here and a lot of new people too. Yeah, um, the enthusiasm behind you know our audience and our brand is really what gives us a lot of motivation on some of these days. Um, you know, it's not easy to get up some days and go ride, mm-hmm. um, especially if you been up wrenching on your sled until two in the morning <laughs> um, but to see you know review the footage at the end of the day and go see the smile on people's faces out in the backcountry like 
uh, that gives me a lot of motivation. So I'm thankful for that and the team behind us, mm -hmm. you know, we wouldn't be able to do it without them either. So um, all in all, just super grateful to be able to do what we do every day. Yeah, no, that's so awesome. So really appreciate you guys uh, coming on and uh, you know, any other final thoughts or final words before I go through the wrap up here? Just thank you, John, for yeah, having us on the show. And on. thanks to whoever's watching. We can't see the list, but uh, appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. Yeah, yeah. Feel free after the show's done to go into the comments and, you know, thank everybody for watching. Cheer them on and, uh, you know, give them, give them some love there in the comments. And, uh, you know, again, if you guys haven't shared this out already, please do. And, you know, this is John Farian Live Large Training School. And so we're going to go over this one more time and I expect you guys to take notes. Ready for Dylan and Jack? You guys got notepads around anywhere? No? Okay. Are you going to? Ready. Maybe, are you ready? Okay. Live large. Live life to the fullest. Make live them. Life. Make the, make, make the most of every day. Every day. Good yeah. days, bad days, in between days. You maximize it. You make the most of it, right? And the best one, which is what you guys just did tonight, you make a difference to others, right? You're here. You're telling your stories. You're making some videos. You're making a difference to me. You're making a difference to everybody who's watching. So that is the foundational values of Live Large, what it's all about. And by the way, even though you didn't know all that, you guys are living it. You guys are living life to the fullest, making the most of every day, and you're making a difference to others. So God bless all of you guys. Jack and Dylan, thank you guys for being on. God bless everybody and have an amazing night. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you, guys.